We, we wanted to start with two incredible entrepreneurs to talk, to kick off the event. And who better than inviting the stage? Every single one of us has used this person's product. How many of you here have flown on an Air Asia plane? I think every one of us has. Tony, you have really changed this region. You've opened it up. You're a phenomenal entrepreneur, apart from the football team you own, Cardiff City, sorry. I'd like to invite you to the stage. We're going to have a fireside chat with you, Yossi, and you, Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tony to the stage. Yossi, Tony it's yours. Fernandez, one of the greatest entrepreneurs of the world. Thank you, that's a lot for you. Tony, can I rub shoulders with you so I can say yes, at home yes. that we rub shoulders? Great, let's sit down. Tony, how many customers, happy customers, uh, users, uh, clients, how you call your, the people you are? Uh, Our guests. Guests. How many guests you accommodated in the last 12 months? Uh, 89 million. 89 million. Yeah. You know Alexander Mokadon, the famous uh, leader of uh, 2,000 years ago, was known that he knew each the name of each one of his soldiers. Do I heard that you know the names and the preference of each one of your 89 million guests? Is it no, true? I no, I don't. No, no I don't. But I, I love this uh, environment. It reminds me of AirAsia. Everyone's squeezed in. There's <laughs> standing at the back. This is an AirAsia conference. We like it. Congratulations to NUS and Unbound. Tony, how many years ago you started uh, AirAsia? I started uh, 16 years ago. 16 years ago. Yeah. That's not a very long period. You, have, you tried anything before AirAsia which didn't work? Uh, no. You sold lemonade on the street? <laughs> no, no. I, I was in the music business, um, making music. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people were stealing the music. And so I decided to go into airlines. I know no one in this conference would ever... Anybody stealing, stealing airplanes or not? Uh, <laughs> can you download airplanes illegally? No, we can't. <laughs> not that I'm aware of. People do steal planes, though. Good. So 16 years ago, you woke up with a... Uh... Yeah, so I, let, let me, I was in, um, I was 12 years in music. I had a fantastic time. And I was sitting in, I went through three mergers. Uh, it started as Warner Communications, became Time Warner, and then AOL Time Warner. Oh. And... Uh, we have a common background. I didn't know that. We do. And I, I owe you a lot, which I'll tell you, I'll tell the audience about later. Give me my part. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so we were all invited to New York, Rockefeller Plaza, to listen to the wise words of AOL. And I was sitting there thinking, wow, what drugs are these guys on? You know, this was 2001. David Colborn? Sorry? David Colborn? No, it was uh, Steve Case and Bob Pittman. Yeah. And so they were telling us all this. And then, it's funny, you make your career on one statement. Uh, Bob Pittman says to me, Tony, what do you reckon our stock price should be in a year's time? And the stock price was $80. And I thought, God, listening to you, if it's still $80, we're doing well. You have to but I couldn't say that. So <laughs> I said $90. And he went, wrong boy, $500. And then my famous mouth opened. And I said, please give me some of the drugs you are taking. <laughs> um, and I knew that was the end of my career. At, at AOL Time Warner. I walked out of the room, I sold my stock options, and... Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't. Why didn't you tell me to sell them? I know. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know me. And then I, I went to my boss and I said I quit. He was thrilled because he always wanted to get rid of me because he thought I was after his job, which I was. And so he paid me before I changed my mind. And uh, I flew up to London, because London's kind of my second home in many ways. Sitting, sitting in a bar, and I saw Stelios of EasyJet on TV. Oh, he used to have a huge internet cafes all over London, you remember? Correct, yeah. And then I thought, wow, I've always liked airlines. I've always wanted to do, own an airline. I used to tell my mum I'm going to own an airline one day. So I went to Luton Airport, a uh, small little airport uh, in the north of uh, London. Everything was orange. People were flying to Barcelona for eight pounds, flying to Paris for six pounds. And I thought, I'm going to do this. 
Now, there's a very fine line between brilliance and stupidity. It's really, really narrow. <laughs> but I thought, hey, I'm 36. If I, if I fail, I'll go and be an accountant, which is what I was trained to be. And uh, you only live once. You don't try, you don't know. And, remember uh, it. Remember what this guy said. You don't try, you don't know. Who in the audience is aspire to create his own company? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Don't be shy. About three. You know, I, I think it's a... <laughs> We're in Singapore. Uh, they're well looked after here. So the, 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 the thing about being an entrepreneur, and I think there are many, many entrepreneurs here, and many, many budding entrepreneurs, and that's why it's exciting about being here. I never thought I had the courage to do it. Look, I was meeting Madonna. I was signing artists. I, I was involved with Dick Lee in Singapore. It was a fantastic as, as a young guy. And you get paid a good salary. You get to fly you know, in first class, etc., etc. It's hard to give that up and take a risk. But I thought, I don't want to sit there at 55 and say, I wish I did it, because it's too late. You can't press that rewind button. And if I failed, I failed. And I've failed in many things. Um, but at least I tried. What was the, your most embarrassing failure? Oh, like wow. something really stupid, you know, which will, if you tell it, you will be humiliated for the rest of the day. <laughs> Please share with us. Who invited him? Uh, <laughs> yeah, can I tell, before I tell you my humor, I got so many, I don't know where, Formula One, football, uh, so many. And but, yet you left standing. You, you. Yeah, I mean, you know, as an entrepreneur, as someone who's well, I mean, you're always attacked. You're always accused of things and all kinds of stuff. People always want to bring you down. And that is, that is the strength of being an entrepreneur. One, you control your own destiny. Two, people get jealous. People want to attack you. People want to, you know, I've had 16 years of it, but I'm still smiling. Um, and How many scars on your back? Whoa, lots, lots. Later tonight, I'll show you. Uh, you know, when I was a single man, this man was very important to me. He created ICQ, which was the I early... I created, I funded it, but the, okay. The go earth, ahead, the go earth. Ahead. No money, no creation. Uh, but through ICQ, ICQ was the early Tinder. Okay. <laughs> and My wife is not going to like this <laughs> new positioning of the product, I'm telling you. And it was my first belief in ASEAN, because I met girls from Brunei, from Singapore, from Indonesia, all down to you. <laughs> so you were the first Tinder man. You know, I have to tell and you. And I saw Yossi using Tinder just before we came in. <laughs> don't tell his wife. Don't, don't tell everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, you know, I go to conferences, there is always one guy who come to me after the, at least after it and told me, you know, I met my wife through ICQ and I have two kids or something like this. Yeah, and I didn't meet my wife. Now, Tony, so 16 years ago, you decided you are leaving the music business that you had experience and some accomplishments, and you started something totally, totally new. What it takes to be a world-scale entrepreneur? It's definitely not the knowledge of the industry, I think, because... Uh, no, no, I knew nothing about planes, but... So what, 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 what was the source of the, I, I of think the, the fire in the belly? Uh, well, <laughs> I suppose one, I got frustrated working in the corporate life. I, I could see... Um, I actually got tired of Americans telling me what to do. I thought there was so much more we could do in, in Southeast Asia, so I thought, well, I didn't want to complain and moan about it. I said, leave and go and do your own thing. Uh, I, you know, as I said, I wasn't afraid uh, because maybe I didn't know. What drove me was one number. I saw only 6% of Malaysians had flown. And I thought, wow. I mean, it was, we took flying for granted. So only 6%. I thought, here's an amazing product. If I could make everyone fly, what a product. So I didn't think about politics, government, competitors, all these things. I thought, what a great idea. And um, obviously, I saw EasyJet. And coupled with that percentage, it was just, let's do it. And I think that's my philosophy. And that's my philosophy to everyone out here. If there's a product someone wants, it will happen. 
Uh, of course, I, I picked a really tough product. Yeah. But, you know, we've, we've gone from two planes to 230 aircraft. 230 yeah. aircraft. So we started our first year, we carried 200,000 people. And in the last 16 years, we have now um, carried 500 million people. That's half the size of China. So it's, it's, it, it can be done. And that's my when, encouragement. There's nothing better than owning your own business. When you wake up every morning, do you count all the 500 uh, airplanes to make sure that no. nobody took But you know, when I'm feeling down, um, I'm a musician, right? When oil price goes up, we play the blues. Uh, <laughs> when oil price is down, we play rock and roll, right? <laughs> but that's a therapy. Other things that kind of make me happy, you're right, when I'm kind of a little bit down, I'll go out to the runway and I'll just look at all the planes. Yeah. I look at all the people and you that get we've this moved. And you think, well, it was all worth it after all. Before we go to the future, you know, until now we spoke on the past, I want to spend a few minutes on the future. But before that, I have to ask you one question. I think the paradox of the airline business, everybody like to do, every passenger like to do two things. Number one, he like to fly, and then he like to complain about the airline. So. Mm -hmm. How you explain it and how you are dealing with it? <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, it is, a, uh, it is, it is a, a business that everyone has an opinion on. And, uh, you know, you never make everyone happy. It's like marriage. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> I just got married, so I'm happy. Don't spoil it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Tony, okay. with this kind of uh, huge capacity and ability to execute, because it really takes amazing execution capacity to run an airline, what is in the future for you? Well, I think, um, well, we, we, we keep growing. We bought a lot of planes. I'm a huge believer in ASEAN. I'm but you have 89 million people in the palm of your hands. What yeah. are you going to do with them? Ah. Okay. Other than selling them duty-free on the board. Yeah. So I think we're in this fantastic revolution now. And I think you see it when I walk through the conference. So many brilliant people, so many bright people. Uh, data is changing the world. And I think what we see is that there's a phenomenal new business in um, extracting more value from your customers and providing them a better service. If you look at a lot of the internet startups, They've spent fortunes trying to acquire customers. I, I, have, uh, I have actually got loads and loads of customers. I carry 89 million people. I have a database of 300 million. So we are now looking at this travel ecosystem and saying, how can we provide more service to our customers using the huge amount of data that we, um, we have? and we're building a whole new digital experience. The one, we can use digital to improve our airline experience. Two, we can use the data and digital to build new businesses. That's very interesting. Can you share with us so we may steal some good ideas from you? Yeah, sure. It's okay. Imitation is the best form of flattery. Uh, if you do it. I'm sure there are many Singapore airline people here anyway. So, uh, <laughs> what do you think about Singapore Airlines? Ah, fantastic airline. Uh, <laughs> they, I fly on them. They gave me a birthday cake, uh, and uh, I praised them on my on my website. A great airline. Uh, they copied my strategy, though. Uh, <laughs> they. Uh, they came out in my it. country for such comments people are harvesting uploads you know yeah. <laughs> they uh, should be a little bit more generous they, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's from the music oh. he, th he thrives on uploads they came up they came up with an airline called tiger you know i always said it should be called pussycat <laughs> and uh, in fact they eventually changed the name to scoot but I, don't I saw the prices are very competitive, you know, yeah, you can sure. fly from Athens over here for 199 uh, uh, euros. Sure. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so anyway, now going back to the question. Uh, so we basically, uh, we see financial services as a huge opportunity. Uh, many of our customers are migrant workers. I think they overpay for uh, remittance. Um, a lot of our customers are traveling using credit cards and are paying a huge amount 
on uh, exchange. So, so why don't you go and buy uh, uh, Western Union? Yeah. I, I, we never believe in buying. We believe in building. In building, okay. So we've built something called Big Pay, which is um, a card that will slash the exchange rates, which will, once we get our approvals, allow remittances to be brought down quite dramatically and uh, at, at some point uh, give uh, affordable loans to startups. We think the startup economy is really important, but young kids, it's really hard to get capital. Uh, you know, you have to mortgage no. your first kid, you have to mortgage your house, uh, mortgage your wife, um, but it's really difficult. So that's one thing we're doing. The second thing is uh, improving the whole shopping experience. Uh, a lot of people will come to Singapore from Malaysia or from Indonesia. And so we have that data. Uh, we can push them into deals, into restaurants, into stores. Um, and the stores are happy because they get the footfall, uh, etc. And then trying to get our consumers to make money as well by providing deals on our platform, by finding um, you know, a fire fox or whatever to put on our platform. So we see three or four uh, huge opportunities. Within the airline, we think there's a massive opportunity in making the customer experience better. Um, we're big believers in the face. We think you'll pay with, with your face soon. You'll check in with your face. And um, you know, our, our technology um, will handle plastic surgery as well. So we can handle any changing of the face as well. Uh, and very soon, you know, we're, we're putting 24,000 sensors on the plane that will give us a huge amount of data in terms of predictive maintenance uh, and all these things. You are things. already in the execution phase or you just... Yes, we're already in the execution phase. Um, even in our airport, um, and we are working on ambient technology. So when you come into the airport, we'll push you towards a certain queue. Our app uh, will be able to process visas, etc. So. We're even looking at permanent bag tags, so you never have to uh, check in. So data has just really thrown everything open, and we're a big, big believer in digital currencies. We think that's a huge you opportunity do. to reduce costs, yeah. But still, you know, it's quite, uh, quite very young. Yeah, when I started AirAsia, there was no low-cost airline, um, and everyone thought we were crazy. Um, Maybe they were right. Maybe they were right. Um, <laughs> are you looking at a mirror? Uh, <laughs> so I have to tell you something about the mirror. You know, many, m many young people who are coming to me and I ask about their business model, they tell me we will start it, we will invest money, and then we will look for somebody who will pay us more. Yeah. And I always tell them, when you look for the fool who will pay you more, and you look back, many times you see a mirror behind you, you yeah. know. <laughs> True. Yeah. Tell, tell me one more question. Far East, what, what we used to call, we Western, you know, being very conceited, we used to call Far East. Actually, it happened that you are now the center and we are becoming the Far West, but that's a different... Uh, issue. Two questions about uh, Southeast uh, Asia or including China. The, uh, number one, who are the really great entrepreneurs in the region that you have a lot of respect uh, to, that you appreciate? I mean, I think you, you, you see a lot of, let, let me take the young entrepreneurs first. I think what Grab is doing, Anthony is doing is fantastic. He's built an ASEAN business um, very quickly. I think, you know, even though they're uh, an irritant to us, Traveloka has done a phenomenal job, Gojek. It's an exciting time. It's, it's what I've always believed in, ASEAN, that there's so much talent, there's so much potential, and, uh, you know, the quicker ASEAN gets together, that's a huge market. We have 700 million people there. And so I hope technology and the digital world will bring down these invisible barriers because there's so much great uh, talent out there and otherwise we're going to be marginalized by China and India that have huge yeah. populations you know I've been pushing we don't have an Amazon in ASEAN yet because of the there isn't a single customs window moving goods between ASEAN is still so difficult 
while China can send goods into ASEAN so easily. We have to have an ASEAN single window so an e-commerce entrepreneur can sell his goods to 700 million people. So you are considering to make a freight airline also? No, no, no. I leave cargo to, to other, other people. people. Yeah. How you invest? People, people think traveling on AirAsia is like traveling on cargo. <laughs> uh, I just want to say we have won the world's best low-cost airline nine times in a row. So we're okay. <laughs> okay. I have many other questions, but I think at this point, it's the really the right time to conclude with a small subliminal, you call it a promotion to AirAsia. I would like to thank uh, Tony. It's always a pleasure and it's always very interesting to meet you. If my mother would uh, be alive, she would say you are a character. So, <laughs> but you are a great entrepreneur and a great executive. Thank you very much for coming to share your experience with us. Thank Thanks you, Yossi. Much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much.